Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second session of the day for the Systems and Workflow Bootcamp. I can see lots of you flowing in already, uh, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, just while we wait for a few more people to join, just do me a quick favor and go into the chat box at the bottom and just post a quick message in there and let me know, let me and James know, what's the biggest thing you're looking to take out of this session that James is about to deliver with you right now? So he's gonna be sharing all things pricing and sales system. So just give just give us an idea, what kind of thing are you looking for? What's the single biggest takeaway that you're looking to get uh, out of this session this morning? Please log in through the Google Home app. My Google continues to talk to me. <laughs> that's the second time it's been that. I'm just taking my watch off because every now and then I'll say something that's close to, I don't say it, but, <laughs> but a voice activated thing. It's trying to find me a, a copy of your book on Amazon. <laughs> so David Bountine wants a full understanding of the entire process, David. So that's cool. We will cool. definitely be able to do everything in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my very best, David, but I'll point you to some things to help you. Nice. Best way to price your clients to make the most profit. Thank you, Sunita. I pronounced that right. Cool. Okay. So yeah, keep posting your chat messages. Glenn says to get the whole process a bit more slick as it feels clunky with too many steps. Yeah, hopefully what, what you'll see James share is a, a really streamlined uh, process. Uh, for, quick for wins. Sales. Oh, Georgie, there's no such thing as quick wins. Oh, I'll try and find you some. I'll find you some quick wins. <laughs> Glenn Martin's He's, he's, he's a slick person, so he needs his process to be as slick as him. Awesome, awesome. I'll find cool. you some quick wins, Georgie. Well, thank you very much for posting in there, guys. Just moving forwards, um, today's agenda, we just had a really awesome marketing session with Amanda Seawatt. She shared some absolute gold dust in terms of how you can attract your ideal clients. And now we're leading really nicely into James' session where he's going to be sharing how you can sell to these, these clients, help to sell your services to them, but also price them profitably and conf confidently as well. Uh, and then moving forward for the rest of the day, you've got myself and Jacques at 11 talking about all things onboarding. How do you actually take these new clients of yours and onboard them effectively? And then we're going to be rounding off the day with Darren from Fathom talking about advisory systems and how you can deliver timely and practical advice to your clients. A couple of housekeeping rules before we get started. Nothing that you haven't heard before, I'm sure. Um, mute your phone, close your emails, lock your door, and most importantly, focus um, you've taken the time to be with us this morning. There's obviously something that's caught your interest uh, that you want to learn more about. So my uh, recommendation would just be to focus as much as possible, try and limit other distractions and get the most out of your time with James here this morning. He's got a lot to share with you. Um, please use the Q&A box if you've got any questions. Uh, it will just help myself and James keep track of those as they come in throughout the session. Uh, remember to get social using that hashtag right there. It's quite a long one. I do apologize if you've got sore thumbs after typing that, uh, but please let us know on LinkedIn or Twitter if you've been enjoying the sessions. Uh, and last but not least, don't forget to hang around until the end of the session uh, to get your free workflow templates that James is going to be sharing with you uh, at the very end. Which leads me nicely onto the introduction. So if I could now please welcome James Ashford from Go Proposal, who's going to be sharing with you the systems you need to effectively price and sell to your clients. James, over to you. Hey, Jordan. Thank you. Hey, everybody. So let me just get my screen sharing. Two seconds. There we go. And adjust my camera. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not going to keep my eye on the chat as we go through this. I'm going to leave Jordan to keep his eye on the chat. So uh, I'll be answering as many questions as I can at the end of this. But if you do have any questions, put them in there. If Jordan needs to interrupt me, he absolutely will do to make sure that I clarify everything. Um, so here we go, guys. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm the founder of Go Proposal, which enables accounting businesses to price consistently and to sell their services more confidently, typically for higher fees. Um, I'm the director of an accounting firm in Manchester called MAP, which is where Go Proposal came from originally. I went and met them and uh, they had a very strong sales process. Paul was really smart with the way that he was pricing his services and selling his services but he was the bottleneck in the process. And while what he provided was a great experience by other accountancy firm standards, what I explained to them was that as a client, I'm not comparing you to other accountants. I'm comparing you to any business that I want to compare you to. And so we really need to create these incredible world-class experiences. We're talking about systems today. And you know, having a system is a fantastic way of making sure that we've got something repeatable, that it's predictable. We've got something that we can improve, that we can remove you as the bottleneck from the process. But one of the ultimate reasons, the highest level for 
implementing systems is to create incredible experiences for our clients. Ultimately, the experience you provide to your clients changes the way that they feel and they will remember how you made them feel long after they've forgotten what you've done for them. So really creating incredible experiences is, is really important to me. Um, and yes, we have live in a more of a digital world now, doing more meetings like this, but that is not an excuse. There is still ways that we can use these type of this type of medium to create incredible experiences as well. I'm also the author of uh, Selling to Serve. If you've read this a few years ago, that's great. But there was a revision done in 2021 at the start of this year in a post-COVID world. It's now twice the size. It became a bestseller straight away. And it really focused on the bits that I'd missing from the book in the first place, which was all around the mindset. And this has been a huge piece of my work for the last 12 18 months to really help people with because I found that that is the biggest stumbling block when it comes to actually pricing and selling your services. So I've developed this model to try and explain the challenge that's going on in your firm if you've not already seen it. So if we was to slice your firm through the middle, one of your goals and probably your primary goal is to be able to impact your clients and serve them to a great level. That's probably the reason why you set up your accounting business in the first place. You also want to create a thriving culture for your team so that they can ultimately serve your clients and do that in a systemized way that's constantly improving. And then if I were to ask you again, what other reasons why you've set up your business, at some point you'd say, well, it's to make money. And what I find is that typically firms get that in the wrong order. You know, they put serving their clients as the primary focus. And while that's a beautiful thing, well, that's a great thing. And it's the reason why you do it. It's the reason why you get out of bed in the morning. Fundamentally, if you don't make money, if that isn't at the core of what you do, you can't serve your clients. You can't build your thriving culture. And also, if you can't build a hugely profitable accounting business, how can you help your clients to do the same as well? So for you guys, it's a double-edged sword as to why this should be the main focus and why you absolutely need to get this right. And if we're able to get this right, then hopefully, just hopefully, we're able to get joy and fulfillment from the work that we do. Now, there are two sets of problems that I see in accounting businesses. One are surface problems and the other are core problems. Now, surface problems are relatively easy to spot and they tend to come in the form of over-servicing clients, being underpaid for the work that we do, being undervalued or certainly feeling undervalued, being unsystemized, which ultimately leads to chaos in our firm and chaos unchecked over time will lead to overwhelm and overwhelm unchecked over time can lead to even worse things as well. Now, these surface problems will be showing up in your firm, no doubt, on a day-to-day -day basis. And what we attempt to do very often is try and solve these things. But it's a bit like rubbing a potion or a lotion on a symptom, but without actually getting to the root cause of what's going on. So in order to remove these, it makes sense to actually dig into the core of the business. And if we dig into the core of your business, where the heart of your business is to make money, it's the primary function of a business is to make money. Now, I get some pushback on this, but you go and do this research and you'll find people far smarter, far cleverer than me, and they will kind of echo these sentiments. And the only way that you can make money is with a sales system. As, and as soon as you say the word sales, I know that you kind of recoil a little bit because the word selling has such negative uh, connotations because we've experienced bad salespeople in the past. But if we look at what the sales system is, fundamentally, very simply, which I like things to be nice and simple so I can understand them, it's two halves. One is the scope the work that you're going to provide to the client, the value that you're going to give to them, the promises that you're making for them in exchange for the price that they're going to pay. That is fundamentally what's going on. And when those two things are in balance, that's what generates the cash. And that is fundamentally the sales system. And again, I'm very interested in mindsets, but if you think, I want to make money. I want to grow my business. I want to impact my clients. Oh, but I don't like selling. That's a conflict in belief and it will allow you to ultimately do what you want to do. But typically the way the client relationship start out is that they start out with a scope larger than the price they're getting paid for. And then over time, as the client asks for more things, as you start giving them more time, as you don't start charging for those extra things, that scope slowly and slowly starts to increase until it gets out of hand. And typically at that point, you think, right, I'm getting rid of this client. They're a bad client. They're a complete pain in the backside. They don't pay us enough. They don't value us enough. They're always doing things on their terms. And when you actually break it down and look at it, it's like, yeah, you allowed that to happen. You created the scenario for that to happen. 
So what we need to do is to bring these two things in balance and then to maximize the size of both of them so that ultimately we're delivering the most value we possibly can to our clients. So how do we solve pricing and sales? Well, I can give you the map. I can just give you the blueprint and show you how to do it. And I've been doing this for the last four years. So when people sign up for our product, go proposal, what we do is we ask you three questions because this is the thing. People think they're not profitable. You will be profitable. You just won't be perhaps consistently profitable across all your clients. So we ask you to say, go and find out the clients who you are profitable for. What do you charge for bank rec? for 50 transactions a month? What would you charge to run payroll for one person? What would you charge for each person after that up to 10 people? And we want you to go and get your most profitable clients that you have already and for us to answer those three questions. We can't tell you what to charge. We can't give you the price. You can't just go and get a benchmarking report. That's not allowed. That's anti-competitive. You have to kind of get your most profitable pricing to start with. And once you've got that and you input that into our wizard, then what our system will automatically do for you is build out all of these services into your app within like two minutes with pricing methodologies taken from some of the leading firms that we've had the privilege, the great privilege of working with over the last years, few years, and from Paul himself within MAP and to build out all of these different variations in the system for you. But again, based on your profitable pricing so that you can comfortably sit with a client and generate that pricing for you. So that's easy. So I can solve this for you really quickly. So we've done a good job there, 11 minutes past 10, and I've solved the fundamental problem. However, as you might expect, it's not as easy as that. And so having the map is one thing, but you have to have the accompanying mindset to go with the map. Otherwise, nothing will move forward. You can have the perfect blueprint, the perfect model of another successful accountancy firm. But if your mindset doesn't fundamentally align with it, you will not go anywhere. And this is where it gets even more challenging. It's okay you having the right mindset, but you may have a business partner, other partners, key members of your staff whose mindset doesn't align with that. And if that doesn't happen, then that makes the whole thing either very, very slow to move forward with or near impossible. We've encountered that in our own firm. I've encountered that in the many firms that we've worked with, uh, both here in the UK, in the States, in Australia. I've encountered it. You know, we work with top 100 firms where it's really challenging, where you've got like 20 partners and a hundred year history and kind of everyone's doing things in their own way and how to bring all of those on board with what you need to do is a massive, massive challenge and takes some real work. And this is where we need to dig in. I believe this is the greatest effort that you need to focus on. So when people say quick wins, I guess the quick win is you need to change your mindset. It's whether you're ready to make that breakthrough in your mindset yet, because the reality is a breakthrough is an instant event. Breakthroughs do not take time. Breakthroughs are instant. And it's when you say, we must do this. We have to change. We cannot continue like this. The moment you decide it becomes a must, you will make that breakthrough the same day. There is nothing stopping you from going and repricing a client after in this, this afternoon and going and doing it and making that breakthrough. But whatever it's a should, we should do this. We know we should make these changes. You perhaps won't make that breakthrough as quickly as you want to. So what I want to do in this first part of this session is to dig into what are some of those barriers in our thinking around selling. So why do you think selling is bad? Well, we've all experienced bad salespeople. Typically, you're a qualified person and you may see that selling is beneath you. You may not like it. Like I say, you've experienced bad salespeople and you do not want to be associated with that at all. But the psychology behind it goes actually much deeper than that. The biggest reason why we don't like selling is fear of being judged and fear of rejection. And these are fundamental core beliefs that we have that are very hard to unpick. And in actual fact, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can completely remove these because they're hardwired into our brain. And if you don't think you think like this, tell me if you've done this before. So you've got the chat box, give me a thumbs up or say, yes, you or a member of your team have done this before. So you complete a piece of work for a client, uh, maybe a small piece of work. It may be a mortgage application. It may be, can you do a piece, run an extra payroll for an extra member of staff? It may be, can you, I don't know, tell me if this electric car is good value for us to, to run, put through the business, small piece of work. And you get to the end of the piece of work, and you say to the client, 
on this occasion, on this occasion, there is no charge. We should normally charge for this piece of work. There is a price attached to it. And if you come to us again, oh, we're definitely going to charge you next time. But on this occasion, we're going to do it for free. And you justify it to yourself that you're being kind, that you're being helpful to this person. So let me just have a look at the chat. Is anybody saying that, um, yes, you, uh, you do that? Okay. So let's pull the chat book back up. There we go. Guilty. Great question. Absolutely. I don't want to feel pushy like a pushy like a car salesman. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Sadly, yeah. So we justify it to your, your, ourselves um, that we're doing it out of the goodness of our heart, but we're not. We're doing it because we're, we don't want to be seen as greedy. We don't want to be seen as the salesperson. We don't want to be judged by them. We, we, we fear rejection. What if they leave us? What if they go on social media and tell everyone that we're, you know, we, how on earth can he charge for doing furlough claims in these current times? We're all up against it. We've all got problems. How on earth can they not go and help us with this? What terrible people they are. Um, and so we have all this fear and we need to unpick it because it's, it's not there. It really isn't there as much as we think it is. That isn't the case. And our clients have fears as well. The next thing is you told you were told that your qualifications would be enough or that's what you've been led to believe that if you were just more qualified, if you just have more skills, if you just have better services, if you can deliver your services better, you won't need to sell. People will just be throwing money at you for all those extra services. So what happens is you go and get qualified. You try and sell them. People don't buy them or they don't pay for the, the price that you want for them or you're not very good at selling. So you think, ah, I know what it must be. I need more qualifications. So you go and pay for more qualifications, do all that training, come back, think that they're, they're now going to throw uh, money at your feet. Doesn't happen. So we go away. And we keep thinking that selling is beneath us. I cannot stress this enough. Selling is the highest level skill that an accountant can have. And the reason why I say this is that selling isn't just about money. Selling isn't just about transactions. We're always selling all of the time. You're either selling your client on why they need to move over to this cloud software or they're selling you on why they're gonna stick with their desktop software. You're selling to your clients why they need to give you all the payroll information they need to by 5 p.m. today, or they're selling you on the fact that no, they're not, they're gonna deliver, they're gonna give it to you at 6 p.m. on a Friday and expect you to say, stay late. Either way, a sale is happening. This is why we have to become much better at selling. And finally, we think that you take you think that you're taking money from people who don't have it. You think that somehow to charge them for that extra thing or to charge them for their bookkeeping, these people are going to go hungry. They're not going to be able to feed the kids. They're going to be rendered homeless. There's no money out there, is there? At the, the, this time, really, is that the case? Amazon are now doing 1.4 billion dollars a day. Jeff Bezos has gone from being the richest person in the world to being the richest person in the world. People have got money. They're just spending it on crap on Amazon. You've got to stop feeling guilty about taking it from your clients for the incredible value and insights that you give to them. You know, you think that your clients have no money, but I guarantee they still have a nice car on the drive. They've got 70 inch plasma TV on the wall and all the kids have iPhones. So why do you not think that these clients have money? They absolutely do. And you've got to get more comfortable taking it for the incredible, incredible value that you provide to them. One of the deep fears that we have is it's not that you don't want to charge for your services. It's that you don't want to discover that they don't want to pay for them. Now, we're getting into deep, deep fear, deep psychology. Again, I, I try and unpick a lot of this in my book, but that's really what's at the heart of going on. So let's have a look at why clients say no. And when I say they say no, they may not say no. They may say it's too expensive or I don't see the value in that or I don't have time all of those are variations of no. And what happens is you buy it. So again, they're selling you on something. So you present this set of services to the client. They say it's too expensive. So what you say is, well, we'll drop the price or we'll do these extra things for you. Okay. And then they say, well, I don't have time. So you say, okay, well, we'll do this extra stuff for you or we'll go and gather all that data for you as well. And then what you do without knowing it in those two little things, you now prevent the sale from happening at all because that's not really what they mean. They, that's not what they were saying when they said it was too expensive. The real reason why clients say no, and I'll get to the, the final point here, but there's three reasons. What, one is they have a lack of trust in the outcome. 
you've not given them enough certainty that they are going to get the outcome that they want. So rather than say that, they will say, seems too expensive to me. And it's because you've not given certainty. The next one is they have a lack of trust in you. Now, this is a place that you don't want to go. With the first one, you may be comfortable to ask them that. You may say, well, what, what is it that you don't feel certain about? You know, what, what, do you, what, what can I give you reassurances about, okay? And just interesting on that first one, people would rather be certain about a bad decision than uncertain about a good one. You can present to them a great solution, but if they're uncertain about it, they would rather stay with their bad solution, which they're uncertain is bad. And if you, which sounds so twisted, and if you don't believe me, and if you have kids and you go to a new town because you're passing through whatever, you're on a long journey, you're passing through a town and your kids are hungry and there's a beautiful looking restaurant there, serves this great food, a beautiful deli here, whatever, all these cool places. And there's a McDonald's, you'll go to McDonald's. You know, it's going to be crap. You know what you're going to get, but you know, you're going to kids are going to eat a, a McDonald's happy meal, right? So we'd rather be certain about a poorer quality solution than risk going somewhere potentially better that we don't have full certainty in. So it is happening. It plays out in our lives all the time, guys. The second one is a lack of trust in you. And this is where we tend not to like to venture ourselves because we don't want to find that out. We don't want to know that they don't trust us. Um, even though there are several ways that we can help them to, to build their trust with us. But the ultimate reason, guys, the ultimate number one reason why clients say no is they have a lack of trust in themselves. They don't trust themselves to make the right decision. They have made bad decisions before, and now they don't want to make another bad decision. We're not trained as people, as business owners, how to make good decisions. Making decisions is the only power that moves a business forward. It's the fuel that moves a business forward. And if they're not trained in how to make that decision, they won't feel comfortable in doing it. And so what's really interesting here, when you couple this up with what I said here in the previous slide, where they're saying it's too expensive, I don't have value, and I don't have time. So you therefore give them extra things for free and you devote more time to it you can now not possibly build the trust in the outcome. You can't build their trust in you because you can't give them the level of service that they want to pay for. And they won't have the trust in themselves. If you have a low price, people don't feel trusting of low price services. They feel more trust in it, in fact, of a high price service. So all of these things are so twisted and so warped in our mind. We're afraid of, of being rejected. We're afraid of being judged. The client is afraid of making a bad decision. The client is afraid they're not going to get the outcome they want. So there's all these fears going on that we're just not bringing to the surface and tackling. Again, we need to really dig deeper into this, but I'm just kind of making you aware of what's going on because if you have the perfect pricing system and you still bring these fears into every client exchange, you can't move it forward. You've got to stop selling accounting and bookkeeping services and instead start selling certainty. That's what they're buying from you. You think you're selling accounting and bookkeeping. You think you're selling bank reconciliation or a report or annual accounts. You're not. You're selling certainty. That's what the client wants to buy from you. And if they come to you and suggest that it's too expensive, you can legitimately ask, where are you lacking the certainty in the outcome? What is the outcome that you ultimately want? How would you know this was a great decision? How can we help you to make the right decision right now? Okay. If you want to dig deeper into this, guys, I lay all of this out in great depth in my book. Uh, you can go and grab your copy from Amazon. Jordan's going to put a link into the chat if you want to go and get that or just go on Amazon and search for it. It's now available on Audible as well on Kindle, uh, paperback, hardback. If you don't want to pay for it or you bought the old copy, um, then you're very welcome to go and get the missing mindset chapters. So you can get them for free off our website. So I kind of felt bad for all the people that have paid for the book originally and missed out on these. But that said, I have rewritten the entire book. So it is worth getting still. Um, but if you just want to go and steal the, the free, the missing chapters and then go and get those, goproposal.com forward slash free. Right. Now we're going to dig into the effortless sales system. Now, someone at the start, at the start of this call said they wanted the full details of the entire sales system. Now, this is hard, but I have got a way to fast track this for you towards the end of this. So um, I'm going to run through this fairly quickly. So the phase of this is 
we've got to capture initial interest. We've got to capture their contact, contact details and instill confidence in the client. Amanda went through all of this in great detail in the last session. She did a brilliant job of this. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to get their details, position ourselves as the trusted advisor, be the authority. And that's the first stage of this. Then what we need to do is to move them into a discovery call where we ensure that we're a good fit for each other. And I'm going to go into more details about this soon. We have a priming phase where we prepare the client for the sales meeting. What most people do is they get a con they get a call, they book a sales meeting for a week or two weeks down the line. And then what typically happens between now and the sales meeting is nothing where it's a great chance for you to build trust with a client, to share stories with them, to manage their expectations and to show them exactly what's going to happen. Really important phase. We then have the meeting itself where we attempt to unlock the full potential of the client relationship. We produce a proposal where we articulate the value professionally, which is so, so important, guys. You need to remember that your services are intangible. You guys are magicians, right? I just give you some data, some information, you work your magic and my staff get paid, right? Or a tax return gets filed or something. The proposal is where we make the intangible tangible. It's where we give it value and a physicality. So it's really important that we give the, do the very best job of presenting it in that. We then have a follow-up process. And I know that typically you guys, you'll follow up three or four times and then you think that means something that the fact the client hasn't got back to you yet. We follow up with a client forever until they buy, die, or say goodbye. We never, ever stop following up, and there is a right way to do that. And ultimately, we're trying to get them to sign up and then tra transition them seamlessly into the onboarding experience uh, with Pixie, which is fantastic. This is the map that's laid out of that. Um, again, uh, you can grab this from the book, actually. I've not put a link in there. I'll post the link online. Um, if you find me on LinkedIn... Uh, James Ashford, I'll post a link online to, to this if you want to go and grab this, but this is in the book as well. But it shows you how we build up through from initial interest right the way through to the sign-up process. And it ramps up like that so that by the time they turn up for the, to the proposal meeting itself, it's very easily, it's very easy. Now, whilst I call this the effortless sales system, I'll be very, very clear up front, this is not effortless to build. This takes effort and time to build in and to sink in. Once it's in, it's effortless to run. That's the point. So, you know, there is effort here. I'm not hiding away from that. And when people were saying before, what's the quick win? What I would say is rather than look at this and think, my goodness, that's so overwhelming. I would pick the one thing. What's the one thing which if we was to solve that would improve this whole process. There's only ever one bottleneck in a process, guys. There's only ever one bottleneck in any system. All you've got to do is find the first bottleneck, solve it then find the next bottleneck, solve that. But there's only ever one thing that needs fixing. So let's just delve into depth. Delve into depth, is that a phrase? I think that's a phrase. We'll delve into depth with um, some of those uh, aspects. So the discovery call. On the discovery call, the first thing we want to do is we want to set expectations as to what the possibilities of that discovery call could be. Because they're either going to be a good fit for us, um, they're a good fit for us and we've got enough information to move them into a proposal meeting. They're a good fit for us, but we need more information from them or they're not a good fit for us. And the worst thing is you get to the end of the discovery call and you're thinking, this client would be a nightmare. Like I would hate to work with this client, but then, and then what do you do? What's the next, you see, you feel it. You think this client's going to be a nightmare. They don't want to pay our fees. They're going to be an absolute pain in the backside. Then what do you do? okay, let's book a proposal meeting. And you're like, why did I do that? And the reason you did that is because you didn't say at the start of the call that there is a possibility that we won't be a good fit for each other. And there's only, in fact, three reasons why they wouldn't be a good fit. And there's very specific scripts that you can use and learn to say in a comfortable way as to why they're not a good fit for you. The next thing we want to do is to gather some key data from that client to determine that they're a good fit and to be able to transition them into the proposal meeting. And finally, to confirm the outcome, which is if they're a good fit, we are now going to book a proposal meeting. Guys, you've got to be in charge of this. You've got to set the tone straight away from that initial meeting as the authority. If you have problems with that client further down the line, I promise you, you'll be able to trace it back to what you said and what you did or didn't do 
in these initial exchanges. This is where you come on and you take control of the situation and you explain exactly what's going to happen. And you can do that in a very authoritative and a very kind way as well. Sometimes I know you guys, I met so many of you and you're so lovely. It's like the loveliest set of people, but sometimes you can be nice when in what you need to be is kind because sometimes being kind is, can be firm, which is to say, look, we're not going to work. We're not going to be a good fit for each other. You've clearly got a, a very specific way that you want things to work. Uh, and I totally respect that, but we've also arrived at certain conclusions as to how things should run as well. And my feeling here is that they're not aligned. So with the greatest of respect, I know it's not worth us transitioning to a proposal meeting. Here's two of the recommendations of firms. I think you would be a better fit for you. Wish you all the best. That's kind. It might not seem nice. The, the person might not think it's nice, but it is a kind thing to do. The next thing is the meeting itself. What we don't want to do is get to a situation where the client is coming to you and you're providing them with what they ask for. Go back again to certainty. Like when they come to you, they need certainty in the outcome, but you've got to find that certainty in the questioning that you ask. You've got to understand their goals. Where are they heading? And you've got to start with their personal goals. Like my business goals a few years ago was to be able to take my kids, uh, these guys to and from school every day. I took them to school this morning. My goal is to take my kids to and from school every day. It was to move into a house near the children's school. It was to be able to get my wife out of employment. She was a, a psychiatric nurse in a secure psychiatric hospital. She'd been attacked. She'd been grabbed by the throat. She'd been kicked in the face, all sorts of things. And I wanted her to get out of that environment so she could choose what she wanted to do. And so they were my personal goals. My business, Go Proposal, is the vehicle that allows me to achieve those goals. But if you don't know those things about your client, how on earth can you give them certainty? Like, you've got to get confident and comfortable with being uncomfortable and having difficult conversations to probe and to find out what is it that your client is looking for. They may not even know, but unless you ask them, you're never going to get to the answers, right? So we need to understand what their goals are, where they are now, you guys are amazing at this. There's so many great tools you can use for this. You can get into their accounts. If you use a great product like Xavier or something like that, it will give you brilliant insights into what's going on exactly in their system. You can get a health score from zero and understand exactly what's going on with their financials. What are the obstacles? Okay, so this is really straightforward. It's the same with any journey. Where are you now? Where are you trying to get to? What are the obstacles that's preventing you from getting there? If you don't know that, there is no way you can present the very best set of services to the client. Then the next thing is how fast do you want to go? Are you hugely ambitious? Do you want us to do everything for you to free you up to focus on your core business activities? Or do you want us to train you in parts of this? Or do you want to fulfill that parts of that function yourself? How fast do you want to go? That puts the onus on the client and allows you to come up with the final thing, which is the solution which is the precise set of services they need from us to reach their goals, overcome their obstacles at the speed they want to go based on their current circumstances. Effectively, it's what you would want if you were them in their situation, knowing what you know. That's all you're presenting to them. I don't, I'm not a fan of presenting three options you choose. I'm a fan of saying, based on our research that we've done with you here, this is the ultimate solution for you. And guess what, guys? They don't have to go with it. They don't have to do it. They don't have to buy it all. But it's your ethical obligation to at least present the very best solution to them. If you want to go and grab the gloss method, learn the questions that we ask in our firm of clients and what can help them, go and grab this. I've got all the documentation and some really cool videos. Uh, uh, goproposal.com forward slash gloss. You can go and grab that. Jordan's put the link in there. You can go and get that. And the final thing is to be able to produce a proposal while you're with the client. This is so important. I was on a, a call with a great guy yesterday and we were talking about this. Um, he uses Go Proposal, but he was sending, he was doing the pricing and sending the proposal out after the meeting and getting a bit of pushback and a bit of resistance. You've got to do this during the meeting. You've got to construct the proposal whilst you're with the client. So whilst we sat with the client, it's so important that once you've been through that process, that we're able to take certain inputs from the client, such as what their annual revenue is, because that's going to inform certain prices. And once we've taken bits of data like that, and we've put that into the system and what their start date is and what their year end is, et cetera, 
we can now go through and start to construct this proposal with them in terms of what is the software that they're going to be requiring from us, what's the level of service that they're going to need from us, if it's bookkeeping, how many transactions are we processing for them, et cetera, what's the frequency of that reconciliation, uh, the compliance services, do not buy into the fact that compliance is dead. Compliance work is our most profitable work in our firm, hands down. Again, exactly what level of service they want from us and then moving into reporting and forecasting and all of the advisory services as well so that ultimately we can sit with the client and present the monthly fee whilst we're with them. This is absolutely critical. They've got to see this being built up with, with them, right? My analogy, it's like a Subway sandwich. We like a Subway sandwich because we like to see it being built. Yeah, salad, peppers, yeah, ranch dressing. We want to build it up together because we feel ownership over that sandwich. It's the same with this. You can't just send this out after, after a meeting, guys. They will not understand it. You will, you will build uncertainty in that client if you do this after the meeting because they don't know what all of these services mean. So they have to be able to have that conversation with you. We also have something called the alignment fee in here as well, which will calculate. Um, so, so if you're onboarding a client partway through their financial year, for services that you charge for over the 12 months, for any missed payments, you're going to make sure that you charge for those upfront, or you're going to spread that payment out over the remaining 10 months of the year in this case here. Really important stuff, guys. It positions you as a financial expert. And I, I love it when clients push back on this and say, well, the other accountants I've spoken to uh, haven't told me about an alignment fee. And you're like, yeah, exactly. And they should. We are experts. We're a business too. We make money. We can't give things away for free because if we do, we can't deliver the level of service that you're going to want to pay for. So we're experts on generating revenue for ourselves. But do you know what? We're going to help you to do the same. We, we would never give anything away for free. And we're going to ensure that you never do that yourselves. Do you want to work with an accountancy firm that gives stuff away for free? and gives you that advice, or do you want to work with someone who knows how to make money? Your shout. It's a very legitimate, straight up, transparent conversation. We're a big believer in our firm as well of logic. Accountants, bookkeepers, by their nature, are logical people. So we use logical factors by the way that we price our services. We have a really neat integration with Xavier, as I mentioned earlier, and that actually pulls through the data in real time so you can see exactly what um, the prices are. And if those prices go up, if they've got more transactions going through their accounts next quarter, next month, whatever, we're going to adjust the fee accordingly. It's those incremental changes, guys, that you need to be able to do that do. And the reason why we need systems, the reason why you need a systemized approach to the way that you price is because pricing is never solved. It's always evolving. So let's say, for example, you do annual accounts and you find that you have a certain type of client that's just not profitable. And then you go and look at it and you realize it's because it's a restaurant. Then what you may say is, okay, well, let's put that in as a factor into the system now. Let's put the learning into the system for different industry types. So if it's a general business, we're going to charge the normal fee. But if you know what, if it's a restaurant or hospitality, then we're going to make a, I don't know, a 20% markup on that, that service because it requires additional effort for that, that client. And so pricing is never fixed. It's only ever tuned. But you have to have a systemized approach so that we can then go back and present to our next client that improvement where we can choose the industry type and put our learning in it. Your systems are either getting better or they're getting worse. You're not in competition with other accounting firms. You're only in competition with your firm last month, last quarter, last year. We've got to be constantly moving. We've got to be constantly improving, guys. And behind the scenes, we can put that learning into the system, like I say, and keep putting these different factors in, whether that's for management accounts. But then on the front end, we only ever want to present that very simply to our clients. If you're interested in using GoProposal and Pixie together and you're not already a GoProposal member, and I've seen lots of names here, so I can see so many GoProposal members on here. Thank you, guys. Give us a shout out. Say hi if you're on here. That's really cool. Um, Ben's asking there if we've got a direct integration with Pixie coming. We have started conversations about that, uh, but you can do it straight away via Zapier. Um, but if you want to sign up for GoProposal today, we'll build out all of your pricing for you using our wizard. It literally takes two minutes. If you've got no interest in the product, it's worth signing up for a free trial, going through the wizard, building out all of your pricing, exporting it as a PDF, 
grabbing it and running. Um, canceling is just so easy. Like we won't, if, we, if you cancel, we won't even try and keep you. It's cool. You can just hit cancel and leg it with the pricing. So if that's all you do, I suggest you don't go and do that. But if you do want to sign up, what we're saying is uh, uh, Jordan and uh, Jack, my main man at Go Proposal, we're going to do a live kickstart training session for you on both products together to, to really get you on a fast track setup of how to use these and how to really integrate them in a nice way. Any members that are already on here that have one or both of the products, you're very welcome to dive in as well and we'll help you to fast track your uh, development of those two products. You want to bring your team members on, you're very welcome to do that. What Jordan has also very, very kindly done is taken all of the effortless sales system that I've shared with you today, because the effortless part is the using of it. The effortless part is not in building it. That's hard. Jordan has built it. He's built it out in the workflow templates and he's just about to put a link in the chat box right here for you to be able to go and grab that and import that into Pixie for you to be able to use. Jordan, you need to be a bit more prompt when I click. There we go. That's it. It needs to be on the, the click, my friend. That's good. Um, and what I'm also doing as well is anyone that signs up for GoProposal today, if you just message our team when you get on board, we're going to send you the free audio version of Selling to Serve uh, for you and all of your team to have. Again, any members on here that, have, that are already with us and haven't got that, just message us guys and we'll send that to you. Um, I keep getting all these messages from people saying, uh, I've been listening to you on my run today. So I don't know if I help people to run faster or slower or or what well, I don't know when they're listening to it, but um, we'll send that over to you as well. But you'll, you'll really get a lot from that. Just head over to goproposal.com forward slash sign up. Oh, Jordan, you could have had that one, man. You could have had that one locked down. Um, and that's it, guys. So I know I've whizzed through a lot and I wanted to make sure that I will leave in. There you go, Jordan. Uh, making sure that I will leave in time for questions. If I could bring Jordan back. Hey, Jordan. Um, hey, we're gonna... sorry. You're going way too fast for me there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go through some questions now, guys. I'm here for you. If you don't feel comfortable asking any question on here, go and find me on LinkedIn. Please connect with me on LinkedIn anyway. Uh, you can message me afterwards. I'll help you in, in whatever way I can and, and share answers with you there. And we're always posting some cool content on LinkedIn as well. But I'm here for you now if um, you want me to answer any questions. Yeah, we've got a couple of good questions that have come in. Uh, one of them from Martin. It's quite a long one, so bear with me. Um, he wants to know how he can justify a higher charge for a better service because... Once he has clients, they tend to stay and greatly appreciate the service and the advice that they didn't get from previous accountants. But how does he convince them and show this from the outset? Because what he ends up doing is charging the same as their previous accountants, but providing double the service. Um, so he's kind of worried that he's asking clients to pay more for something that they've never got before. Uh, and they don't know the value of it because they've never experienced it. Yeah. So the first so the, the first part of the question was, how do you convince a client of the value? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. You, and this is asked by Martin. Yeah. The first person that needs to be convinced of the value is Martin. So Martin, you need to realize the incredible value that you provide me. And um, by the tone of that question, I would suspect that you don't fully yourself first. So that's the first thing that you need to do. A good way to do that is to go to the clients that you've already got and to get them to tell you their story and what they've learned, you know, what, what impact you've had on them in their business and in their life get those stories and, and that will help you. And, but also they're great to share with other people. What you've got stories are fantastic because they show people that you've helped people like them to achieve the results that they're looking for. The other thing is to connect your services to certainty of what they're actually looking for. So this is really important. When you go through the, the gloss method and when you start to find out what they're actually looking to do, Jordan, do you do any sports or anything like that? Uh, I used to do Thai boxing. Oh yeah. Okay. Did you, is it, are there levels? Are there grades in Thai boxing or? Yeah, there are. There are. Yeah. Okay. What grade did you get to? Uh, I got a red band on my arm. Okay. What's the next, so what's the next level after that? What's the next level after that? I think it was orange. Okay, cool. So let's say you're my client and I speak to you and I find out what you're trying to achieve personally and you're doing your Thai boxing. Okay. And okay. So what's your next goal in that? Well, I'm trying to get to my orange band. Brilliant. Okay. What would you need to do in the week? to be able to devote more time to training. Well, I'd need Friday afternoons off. Okay. And what's currently are your Friday afternoons being taken up with? Well, it's a nightmare. I'm getting my receipts for the rest of the week. So I'm kind of heading to a weekend with a clear mind. Okay, great. So if we can take all of that off you, we can resolve all of your receipts, all of your invoices and get everything ready. So you can finish work on, you know, at lunchtime on a Friday and you can devote the time to your training. When do you think you're going to get to that orange tag? Okay, let's, let's do that, okay? And so what we're trying to do now is I'm trying to, this is the thing, guys. 
the service you provide, the impact you have has to show up in their life. It has to show up some way, whether it's they've taken their kids to and from school three times this week rather than none. It's the fact they're having Friday afternoons off or that they're going to the gym, that they've, you know, taken the wife out to lunch or they've played golf with the husband or whatever it is that they, they want to do, right? It's got to show up in the life. Otherwise, what you're doing doesn't mean anything. And then what, what's great then is the start of every conversation is, you know, hey, Jordan, how's the training going this week? How's the orange tag looking on? When's your next fight? I want to see it, man. Like, okay, right. Let's have a look where we are with our bookkeeper. Let's have a look at our management accounts, right? But I'm connecting it to real world events in your ha- in your life, whether you're looking to move house soon. Cool. Where are you looking to move to? I've got a friend of mine, one of the most successful business owners I know, who makes millions profit every year. Incredible guy. He was wanting to move to America a few years ago and set up his business there. His accountant never knew he was trying to move to America. And he said, if, you know, if my accountant doesn't know that, how on earth can he help me as much as possible? And the answer is he can't. So find out what they're trying to achieve in their life, Martin, and connect your services to the certainty that you can deliver that and provide evidence of that through stories of other people you've done it before. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we've got a few more questions, so we'll try and do these quick. I'll fight. do quicker. So I'll just, okay. Hit me. Uh, next go. question is, how does charging for extra work fit in with fixed fee ethos? How does it, you, you got to charge for everything all the time. And so if you got, you got to have a monthly fee so that you can constantly adjust it. So it depends. Is it a new service that you're going to add on to them? Like they've got an extra member of staff on payroll because you've got to review payroll every month. So you've got a new member of staff on payroll. You can add it to their monthly bill and their proposal as of this month. And that even if it's like a five or extra, you're going to do that. If it's a one-off fee, you issue a separate proposal as an extra work order or as a project if it's something big, bigger. But you must, must charge for it. Yeah, and I think like it's it comes down to the scope of that fixed fee proposal. Like if it's not in there, then it's extra. Yeah, and you've got to cover yourself from a risk point of view as well, Jordan. I hear so many people doing things and they're not covered from a risk perspective with their engagement letter. So not only are they doing it for free, if anything goes wrong, you're on the hook for it. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, two more questions here. Any tips or guidance on making good decisions? Yeah, it's to know that version one is better than version none. So I've got that in there. I know people like that phrase. That I'm, My office here is, Jordan, is at an airport in Doncaster. There's a massive plane. I have no idea where it's come from. It's the biggest plane in the world that's outside at the moment, right? And uh, so I imagine it's flying somewhere very, very far. When it sets off here, it doesn't just make one decision in terms of a direction to go in and stick to that. It makes many decisions. Decision one, get on the runway. Decision two, rev the engines and get up in the sky. Decision two, head this way. And they'll make thousands of incremental decisions along the way. What people do is they procrastinate making one big decision and it takes so long to do it. They then dent back out of it. You know, if they, um, if they think it's the wrong decision, the trick is just get started. Just start with something, go and reprice that nightmare client that you've got, that you don't even care if they go, you don't have to make a decision to reprice 200 clients. You can make a decision to reprice two clients. So start small, but you've got to move. My biggest advice from anyone off the back of today, Jordan, is everyone will be fired up and excited about what they've learned. But unless you take action today, I promise you it'll be gone tomorrow. So always take action whilst you're in the mindset of being motivated to do it, even if that's booking a meeting in your diary. Like if you've got a client who's a nightmare and you've got go proposal now, so you've got your pricing set up, ping them an email. Like in the next 10 minutes, just ping them an email saying, hey, Jordan, we need to have a chat. When's good? Like, just take an action and do something off the back of it. Yeah. Uh, we've actually got two more questions. We'll try and do these real quick. Uh, well, one key tip One key tip for changing internal mindset. It's got to be continual. You've got to have continual effort on it. Get my book. I promise you it will help. Go and get the free chaps if you don't want to pay for it or the free order if you don't want to pay for it. Yesterday, um, Jonathan Gorn of FD Works is doing a book club with his team. They don't have to be involved in it, but if they want to be involved in it, they all get sent a copy of my book. He gets them a copy of my book. And every week they review another chapter. It's a four week training session. They do um, collectively together going through my book. So my book will give you the training to do that. Perfect. Okay. Last question. How would you go about proposing for ad hoc projects such as sorting out a stock system? Yeah good one and a difficult one. Um, I, I think the first part part of the project has got to be to charge to scope the project. 
So let's say, for example, right, well, what we need to do here, we do a, we do a, what a stock system, was it? Yeah. We do a, it's called stock mapping or it's, it's called a stock, stock, stock take or whatever, right? I'll come up with a better name later. <laughs> so we've got a stock, stock take. It's, uh, we've got three different levels, depending on the size you are, the size of your business, it's going to be 250 pounds. And what we do is we have a two hour consultation with you where we go through and we understand exactly where you are with your stock system. And we give you three recommendations that you can go and implement straight away. Off the back of that, we also produce a full scope to do the project with you. So step, you know, this is not a free quote, you are charging for this, but you are going to give value off the back of it. So if they want to go and take that project scope that you generate, they could go to another firm with it and use it. So don't be afraid to charge for the scoping of a larger project. Nice, nice. Uh, perfect way to end the session. James, thank you very much uh, for sharing really all of that. Um, just let me share my screen very quickly. Like James mentioned, if you'd like a copy of the workflow template that outlines all the steps of the effortless sales system, and you'd like to have all the scripting, the questions, the whole process for the discovery wow. call and everything else that comes after it, even email templates, uh, you can import that into Pixie. If you're not yet a Pixie user, uh, go ahead and start a free trial. You'll be able to import the template straight away and start using that in there to manage uh, these sales processes. Uh, and just a heads up as well, um, obviously systems and workflows is a huge topic and we want to give you guys the opportunity to be a bit more hands on and learn how to build your own workflows and processes. So we're going to be running a workflow masterclass uh, later on this month where we get hands on uh, with how to map out and actually build these processes together. So I'll drop the link to this in the chat box now. If you'd like to register, uh, you can do if I can find the chat box it seems to have vanished from me. No, yeah. it's gone. I'll find it later. Uh, and yeah, uh, the next session today is uh, onboarding systems. That's with myself and Jacques. We're going to be looking at how you can onboard clients now that you've priced them and sold to them properly. And then we'll be rounding off the day with advisory systems with Darren from Fathom. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you've got any more questions for James, where's the best place for them to reach you? Yeah, find me on LinkedIn. That's the most common place they can do that. I just want to thank you, Jordan. I think what you, you guys are doing is fantastic in this space. So huge well done to you. Well done for organizing this event today. Well done to everyone for coming on board with this. Hopefully everyone's making some great notes. But guys, unless you take action, nothing is going to change. Okay, so you've got nine minutes before the next se session. What I would suggest is take one action or at least define the one action you're going to take off the back of this session. Absolutely. All right, James, thank you very much. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See you guys later. Bye-bye.